Nous allons aborder la notion de connectivité marine au sein des We're écosystèmes. We're going to talk about marine connectivity within marine ecosystems and I'm going to explain how important this connectivity is going to be for the management and the preservation of biodiversity. Now on The Earth's surface is covered 70% by oceans, and 3.5 uh, billion inhabitants depend on the oceans for their livelihood, food, energy, trade, tourism. And 50% of the uh, population lives less than 50 kilometers away from a coast. One needs to understand that management and exploitation of oceans is therefore vital for the livelihood of human population. There is one solution uh, for management, among others, uh, protected marine areas. And protected marine areas represent approximately 2% of the oceans. 6,500 uh, are being implemented across the world. But one needs to understand that this is only one method, among others. And in spite of everything, it's very difficult to implement those areas. It's difficult to understand connectivity. Connectivity is the following. Say we have an island with fishes that reproduce along the coast, and uh, the eggs will hatch into larvae, and for the most part of the species, the larvae are pelagic. They will not remain where they were, they will drift in the currents for days, weeks, years in some cases. They drift with the currents until they find a favorable habitat and they settle down. The larvae will drift in the current, as said, and some of them will come back to the original island to settle down and again reproduce and maintain the same level of population. But sometimes the larvae will not go back to the original island. They will migrate and find a different island where they can settle down. Protecting one area around one island doesn't necessarily mean that we protect the whole of the fish population. We need to understand the exchanges, exchanges taking place between the original area where reproduction took place and the uh, destination where the fishes are going to feed and grow. And this is going to influence the way we implement protected marine areas. Take the example of a fisherman who's going to be fishing on the left hand island. If fishing is exaggerated and too many fishes are caught, this is going to have an impact not only on the fishes living in that area, but also on different islands because the fishes will no longer be able to reproduce themselves and colonize other islands. This concept is absolutely essential for an efficient management of marine resources, especially when trying to implement a protective marine area. An impact, a local impact may have an influence or an impact on a different island somewhere else. This depends very much on the species and on the areas uh, interested by uh, protected marine areas. Some fishes uh, stay where they are and they will be uh, efficiently protected, but some species undergo a very long larval dispersal phase and therefore this is going to have a huge impact. As a researcher, how do we study connectivity? Connectivity is uh, larval dispersal, the phase during which the larvae drift in the ocean, in the currents, but also the post-larval survival when the larvae become juveniles, transportation and the capacity to find a favorable habitat where to settle down. This is divided in two phases, the larval dispersal, based on physical transport and the behavior of larvae in the water column. To study this behavior, we use uh, ocean circulation models based on the speed and direction of the current in three dimensions. We release in the area digital larvae, which behave like little floaters and drift with the currents allowing us to study the models of digital larvae drifting with the currents. Once we acquire knowledge on the biology of species, we can also add some behavioral data. Eel larvae dispersal 
is a good example. Adult eels live in all rivers from Norway to Morocco and in the Mediterranean area. When they migrate to reproduce, they cross the Atlantic to reproduce in the Sargasso Sea, south of the Bermudas, near Florida. Reproduction takes place in the middle of the ocean, larvae, uh, are produced and the small larvae, this is a simulation obviously, but the larvae will drift following the Gulf Stream and the North Atlantic drift. And after one or two years, they reach the European coasts and the Mediterranean coasts. With a simulation based on those ocean models, we can assess larvae dispersal and drift, how long it takes and when, where they arrive starting from a given place. Obviously, the key parameters are model resolution. If we have big current boxes, uh, we have lesser representation than if we have access to fine-scale vortexes. We will acquire better knowledge on uh, larvae dispersal. But we also have to uh, learn about uh, larval behavior and the duration of the larval phase for how long the uh, larvae will remain in a pelagic state within the uh, water column, maybe some weeks, maybe some years. We also need to learn about egg floatability whether the eggs uh, are dense, whether they uh, swim on the surface or further down, and finally the larvae uh, behavior. Sometimes larvae will have a diurnal behavior. They will float on the surface at night and go deeper in the sea during the day. They will then drift with different currents depending on whether it's day or night, and this is going to impact uh, their behavior. We, as scientists, analyze the results and we find the relationship between the starting point and the uh, landing point. For this, we use so-called connectivity matrices, the connection between sources, reproduction areas, and destinations, wells that will be colonized by the uh, larvae. Here we have an example on the California coast. Santa Barbara, several types of fishes reproduce in this area and colonize the surrounding islands. We wanted to establish a protected marine area, and on the right-hand side uh, picture, we have the matrix, uh, connectivity matrix, the likelihood that they will go from, one, from A to B. The darker the red color, the stronger the likelihood. In this case, the uh, top left island is uh, fed by a uh, coastal area, 24 to 49, so that in order to ensure that the species is preserved, we need to protect the island, but also protect the coast, just opposite, so that larvae will continue landing in that area. Key parameters regarding dispersion, not only transportation, but also survival and reproduction. Reproduction, obviously, when it takes place, how many events during the uh, laying season, and individual survival during the larvae transport. Are conditions going to be uh, favorable for larval survival? And finally, the capacity for the larvae to find uh, new habitats. For instance, if the currents take them away from the coast and never takes them back to the coast, it will be difficult to, for the larvae to find a place where to settle down and feed and grow. And sometimes uh, it's the contrary. They can grow easily, become juvenile and adults, thanks to the currents. The main tools to to study larvae dispersal and transportation consists in modeling the behavior. It's difficult to uh, perform experiments uh, right in the middle of the ocean and find about uh, current drift. So we uh, try to uh, label adults. Also, we inject uh, some uh, products into the sea that will be absorbed by the eggs, and we can find where the larval larvae came from and where they landed thanks to the uh, product absorbed by the egg. These and others are methods uh, very useful to study connectivity. What matters here is that we're not talking about a single protected marine area, but a network of protected marine areas. It's the same for the coast and the island. We need to think about the areas that need to be placed in a network. There will be destination areas and 
qui vont des source areas. We must protect the habitat where the fishes reproduce so that their larvae, their offspring, will be able to drift and disperse and find new habitats. And we also need to protect the new habitat, the feeding area where they can feed and grow in, a, an environment, in a favorable environment. In summary, connectivity is absolutely essential for the management of biodiversity. It's the way to make the action efficient. It's useless to have a very large protected marine area. One needs to think in terms of uh, a network of protected marine areas. It's a multidisciplinary approach. We need contribution from uh, physical oceanography, biology, socioeconomy. The, this is not about simply preserving the species, but also uh, matching this with the uh, use made by man on the protected marine areas. We study genetics nowadays to try and understand the genetic connection between the various populations and exchanges which may have taken place on a large scale between the populations.